Hey guys, so today I wanted to repress some of my makeup. As you can see, this one's broken. This one is moving around in this container. And as you can see, this has like a waffle design. So I don't think I'm going to be repressing it into here. I have this. This is the only container I currently have that would house it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. This, I'm gonna just going to repress it and stick it right back in there. And then I have this little pressed powder that... Um, the lid broke so I'm just going to be taping this back together. So this is just going to be me repairing some of my makeup with you guys. This is great for when your makeup breaks just like in this occasion. Or you could also use it for example in this one where I've used up enough of the product to where I can see pan. And maybe when I put my brush in there now I won't be able to get as much. So you could actually repress it to get it flat like this so that you can pick up more product on your brush. Another reason why some people might repress their makeup is because they kind of want to create their own shade. So maybe let's say this is too light and this is too dark. You could mix them together and make a new powder that might be your perfect shade. This is a very, very handy skill to have and it's really easy. So all you're going to need is alcohol. I have this one which is 70%. The higher the percentage, the faster it's going to dry. Um, if you can find 90% percent then that would be perfect it'll cut the drying time down significantly you're also gonna need something that's flat I'm using a cap of a foundation um, you're just gonna need to use it to stamp down the powder it would be best to find something that's the same shape as what you're repressing but anything will do you can use any type of caps like this or maybe even a quarter. Just make sure that it has a flat surface and that it doesn't have any divots or designs on it unless you want that imprinted onto your product. And then another thing you're gonna need is napkins. I would suggest not using toilet paper just because it's really soft. It's gonna leave a lot of fibers in your final product. And then some kind of little tool to break up the powder. I have this little spatula here. It's a makeup spatula, but you can use whatever you want. You can use a toothpick. Um, the back of a brush, whatever you have that's small and can kind of break up the powder. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my alcohol and I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to pour the alcohol into the cap. And you don't want to overdo it with the alcohol. So a cap's worth is plenty. This, as you can see, shattered. We're going to work on that first. And I actually have the remnants in this bowl. This is going to sound counterproductive. So what I'm going to do is break this up and also add it to this bowl. You can also leave the powder in here and just repress it straight in the container. But because this got all over the place and I already put it in that little bowl, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that with the rest. So I am just getting the edges and then I'm just gonna bring it over here and drop it right in. All right, so that is our pan currently. Now I'm gonna take my little spatula and we're gonna break this up even further just to get a nice smooth powder. And actually, let me use the cap that I'm gonna use for repressing and that might break it up faster. You just wanna get it into as fine as a powder as you can. And you are gonna lose some of your product by repressing. That's just kind of a given when you do something like this. But I just try to get as much as I possibly can back into the pan. All right, now we're gonna start adding the alcohol. I think this is enough powder that I'm just gonna pour it in. And you just wanna eyeball it. You want it to be like wet sand. You don't want it to be too liquidy because it's just going to take forever to dry and you're just going to make a big mess. I'm going to add a tiny bit more. As you can see, they kind of clumped up together and we're going to go ahead and stick this right back into the pan. Okay, so we got as much as we could out of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper towel. So I'm going to stick the paper towel right over the pan. And then you can kind of press it with your hand initially. And then use your tool that has the same shape. And go ahead and start pressing that product back into the pan. And this won't transfer any of the product onto the tissue paper, as you can see. It's just the alcohol that seeps through, but there's no product. And I don't know why this is turning pink. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if it's the container. Squeeze out as much of that alcohol as you can. 
and kind of press the product into the walls of the pan. Let me try pressing it without the cap and see if it's still turning pink. Yeah, I don't know why it's turning pink. That's so weird. Hmm. This can change the consistency of the product. If you're not pressing hard enough, it can be a little dusty and kick up y when you use it. So make sure that you're pressing firmly, but not too firm because it can cause you to have a really hard pan. So just keep that in mind. But it's really not hard once you get the hang of it. And there is the pan, and it looks good as new. So what you want to do after you're finished is just let this out to air dry in the open air. Do not close this and put it back in your collection. Make sure you keep it open just like this on your table until it's dry. I would give it a day or two to dry completely and then you can put it back in your collection. So now we have this wet and wild highlight. It's in one full piece but it's moving around on this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer it to here. Because this has a waffle design on it, I don't know how well it's going to repress into it. And this highlight had like a dome shape when I bought it. You're not going to be able to repress it flatly, so I would rather just have it in here. So I think I'm going to break this up into two just because it's so big. I don't want to make too much of a mess because it's already in one piece. So let's go ahead and drop this in. I'm going to break this one up and then move on to that other piece. Okay. This is kind of a dry formula, it's not really breaking up a lot. So I'm going to use my cap again and just use that to kind of break it up. I know some people use like a mortar and pestle. Um, I know they sell like mini ones and you could probably use that. That would be awesome if you do this frequently. Now let's bring in this other half. I'm kind of glad I'm rehoming this highlight because this packaging is so bulky. So I'm happy to get it out of my collection because it was kind of hard to store this regardless. Such unnecessary packaging. It's huge. So this is going to be recycled. Then we're going to break up the rest of this. I can't wait to finally be able to use this highlight. It has been that way for so long that I don't think I've ever properly been able to use this. I've seen people repress powders without alcohol. I feel like it would just turn out really flaky and fragile. I don't know how long that would last without re-breaking. So I prefer to use alcohol. And I forgot to mention, I only know that this works with powder products. I don't know about how it would work with like a lip product or a cream product. With a cream product, you could honestly just smooth it right back out with your finger or like a tool because it's so creamy. Less is more here. You don't want to add too much because it's just going to be soupy and then it's just going to take forever to dry and you're going to make a mess. I like adding it until it looks like wet sand or like pebbles. I think this is good enough. So now I'm going to take my paper towel and stick it right on top. Take the cap and just press down. It's not going to be flat, but that's okay. So let's pull this up and actually, you know what, it seems still a little bit powdery. I'm going to add a slight bit more alcohol. Let me use my finger to press instead of the cap. I think that actually works better. I don't know, it just still looks very crumbly. Either way, it's still going to be in this container, which is way better than having it in that wet and wild container. Because that was just making a mess, so either way, even if this breaks up, It'll still be housed in this container, which is nice. The last thing I want to do is just fix this lid on this container. I'm just using some clear tape. I'm just going to measure it out. I swear, I feel like everyone who has this powder has the same issue with the lid breaking. So there's that. The cap is functional again. So that's all that I had for you guys today. And maybe it taught you a little something if you didn't know already. This is a great way, like I said, to make your products last longer and to get your use out of everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.